All right, he took a break from his arduous softball home run derby, getting his team ready. This is the week Cardell Jones is with us, the Buckeye legendary quarterback. Good to see you, my man. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for always having me. And yeah, you know, it's been some a lot of trash talking already and a lot of game planning and, you know, some pieces been moved around and get ready for Saturday, Saturday night. What do you think besides, I guess, experience in a way, just worldly experience? What are the what are the the formers have over the the current, if anything? That's it. I think life experience. I don't think we're nowhere near as athletic, even back in our day, going against some of these guys like Emeka and Will. And I mean, the, they have a really great um, list of players that's going to play this year. I gave it the full reign to Emeka to pick your guys. And, and he he picked some, some pretty um, guys that's not just athletic on the football field, but, you know, there are multi-sport stars coming out of high school. So let's see. Let me ask you about your squad because we got, you know, Tyvis Powell and Devere Posey and Boom Heron, James Laurinaitis at the Cardale Jones Sportsbook. Who would be the MVP favorite right now <laughs> for the former player squad if you had to pick, Captain? Um, actually, a guy you didn't mention, I'm going to have to go with um, Chris Fields. Um, okay. Because he's usually a for sure hit. And he's unreal out there in the outfield. Okay. So um, he's a guy that's, you know, at least getting a double every time he up, not at least a home run. But I think Chris Fields will definitely be the favorite to win an MVP on my team. I think that you guys, and I'm not going to tell you how to manage this thing, but I feel like if the current guys are just swinging for the fences, that may be the best. You want, like, keep swinging for the fences. Maybe get some deep pop-outs. You guys have to be the... Get them on, get them over, get them in. You yeah. guys may have to play a little small ball. And yeah. I don't know if that's a mentality you guys want, but that could win the game. The thing is, if they keep swinging for the fences as of last year, they can go over the fence. <laughs> you know, so hopefully they get some of these guys get tired in a home run derby and yeah. then, you know, come up short a little bit during the game. But these guys are unbelievable athletes. I mean, you, you look at the list of current guys. Like I said before, all these guys are multi sport athletes. And uh, coming out of high school, and Mecca actually could have played potentially in the major leagues. Mm -hmm. So they got some great athletes. I'm looking forward to it. Outside of a great competition, it's always a great night for for charity. It's a great night to give back to the fans. It's a great night for the fans to have their last opportunity to be up close and personal with the current players before the season. I want to let the fans know we we're talking to Cardo Jones about his charity softball game. It's going to be Saturday at 6.30 p.m. over at Huntington Park. You can get tickets uh, for $10, and they're available at BuckeyeCruise.com. Again, tickets are 10 bucks, so you can get them at BuckeyeCruise.com. Awesome. Great, obviously, benefiting the Buckeye Cruise for cancer and, and all the work these athletes have done for that. A tremendous job. And then, you know, you're playing on the lights, so it'll be a, it'll be a good time over there at Huntington Park. Um, this battle at quarterback, is it one? I mean, you went back, you know, even after 2014, you know, you and JT, you've told our, the story all the way up until the opener. Who's going, who's not? How close do you think it is? And and if you, what boxes Cardale does Coach Day and Coach Kelly want to check to be able to pick their starter for this year? What are they looking at specifically? Um, I think some things that was missing last year, a, a dynamic of the quarterback being a, a legitimate threat to pull down the ball and run. No, uh, and there's no knock on Kyle McCord. That's just not where he's going to make his money at long-term playing his position. But you look at his percentages, you look at the things he's able to do in the pocket, and even when he got off schedule, he was still very effective. But I think this year is going to be who can give you that extra dynamic um, versus a defense where you got to really worry about the quarterback, you know, um, getting outside the pocket, the leadership, and then on top of that, just really making the plays that are there. This team is not, especially this offense, is, is <laughs> they're not lacking any talent. So it doesn't matter who's that quarterback in this position here this year with all these guys around him and all this experience. It's just, hey, protect the football, be a leader out there, and we're not looking for Superman. So I think whoever can really do that at a very effective rate is going to get the nod. You know, it seems to be a theme out there that this year's strength on the offense might be the run game. But where are you at with the playmakers? I know you mentioned Emeka's athletic ability out there on the softball diamond, but just talk about the pass catchers that could be around Will and Devin and what you think of those guys. These guys are unbelievable. I think they got, you know, I think, you know, they get a lot of hype on the uh, the running back room with the new transfers coming in and then also the quarterback with a new transfer coming in. But you got a lot of experience coming back at the receiver side of things, too. Emeka going into his fourth year. Um, Carnell played a lot as a freshman. Brandon played some as a freshman. And then you got the highly recruited um, freshman and, and uh, Smith, and then you got Jalen Ballard, guys who've been there, you know, who knows the system. Um, they don't get enough credit because I think they can be a security blanket for the quarterbacks when the run game maybe sometimes isn't going as planned. 
So I like these guys all over, and I think, like I said before, it's going to be a, a situation where, like, hey, quarterback, you know, just don't mess it up because you have so many weapons around you. I don't view none of these games or none of these opponents, not just in the Big Ten, but around the country, where you're going to say, hey, Devin or Will or Julian or whoever or Air, whoever the quarterback's going to be, go out there and be Superman because we need you. You're the only guy out there. I don't think they're in that position. If you were one of these quarterbacks, let's just the the top two, Will Howard and Devin Brown, would you think if you were Devin that you would deserve your shot outside of camp if it was even and Will Howard's going to be the starter of the season? Do you think they could use Akron, Western Michigan, and Marshall to either have a backup really ready in case Will would get dinged, or do you feel like the starter should be the starter, he should get the bulk, we need to ramp up before the Big Ten? How do you think they'll play those first three? Yeah, well, thank God I'm not the coach uh, making those decisions. But you know, if I was, I think you know, going into the situation, the starters to starter, uh, we're gonna we're, that's who we're getting ready for. Whatever he's done for these nine months, getting ready to the season, he's earned that right. If the lead is a little or the lead is a lot, whatever I feel comfortable with, and we reevaluate, and he said, hey, this guy got the edge over another guy. Then this is our starter. This is who we're getting ready for um, this season, not just. Um, you know, for the first few games and things like that. Now, we got a comfortable lead. Yeah, I, I'm going to get other guys reps to see and just get them that experience. But I'm not going into the season in a situation where let me continue to let this battle play out. Let me see how it look versus live bullets. Whatever scenarios and situations I put them through in the last nine months, I got to feel comfortable enough, and I'm pretty sure the coaches will feel comfortable enough of who came out the other end and, and make them feel the most comfortable saying this is going to be our leader, this is going to be our starter, getting ready for this 2024 season. Hovering over this team, as you know, is national championship expectations, but also at the same time, it's correcting the wrong of the last three rivalry games against Michigan. As you look back over the last three years, has there been something specific that's jumped out to you that's led to the losses, or are there a couple things in your eyes that have gone wrong? Um, Yeah, I I think... um, Outside of saying what has gone wrong for Ohio State, what has gone right for the team of North, I think they reevaluated it. They said, hey, you know, our bread and butter is going to be, you know, um, focused on the front seven on both sides of the ball. And you see that with recruiting. You see that with um, their play style, right? You see that with their mantra of everything they talk about and, and ultimately want to be as a football team. And they ultimately did that with winning the national championship this past year. You know, they did not once ask J.J. to do anything outside of his character, um, but he was able to make plays when, you know, plays wasn't there. But this was a 65, probably closer to 70% run dominant team that was built over the last five years to be in the position they were last year. Now, do they have that same success this upcoming year after losing so much on both sides of the ball? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure, but only time will tell. But they definitely went back to that old school mentality versus Ohio State instead of trying to keep up with the recruiting battles of all the five-star players and, 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 you know, the skill guys. They say, hey, I'm going to focus on the trenches and go get those guys that I see that's going to best fit my program and what I want this culture to be. So much pressure, we know that. It's inherent. You come to Ohio State, you got to beat them. They've lost three times in a row. The only odd part now, Cardale, is that the loser doesn't feel eliminated unless they've lost, you know, two games coming into that game. Um, will the, will it feel the same to you, to others, to the guys that play it? Will it Because ha- it should have the intensity because of the past. Yeah. But that little part of it, does that even seep in at all for you? As a fan, yes. Yeah. And if I was a coach, and clearly I am not far from one, um, I would go into though that last rivalry week game um, with that in the back of my mind as – I can potentially play these guys the following week in a Big Ten championship game where the stakes are a lot higher because now we're talking about that bye week and the playoffs where the top four champions are going to get. So as I'm going into week 12, rivalry week, and maybe I got some guys that's dinged up a little bit, right? Maybe I'm more susceptible to rest them because you can go into week 12 as number one and number two teams in the Big Ten, and that week really doesn't mean anything where you know you're going to play them again the following week for the stakes are a lot higher, right? So you can almost take that NFL mentality where you see guys in the lead the last, you know, 16 to 17 week where you rest in a lot of starters because you already locked down the number one spot. You get the bye week, so you give those guys that extra rest that they're going to get. I That would be my approach. 
because we're, it's the end game. So what that do as a fan, it kind of hurts that rivalry week because now you may not be seeing the intensity. Now you may not be seeing the, you know, the GSF, right? You know, you may not be seeing that from both sides of the ball because it's more strategically in a, a long run type of play. Because if you in that situation with Ohio State and team up north as one and two going into week 12, well, you potentially going to play each other three times that year because you can still match up in the playoffs as well. Good points, man. Great insight. Love seeing you. Good luck this weekend. Uh, I know you're doing it for a great cause, but I know you guys are competitors and you want to win. So sure. get your rest and feel good this week. Appreciate it. Go Bucks. Thanks. Cardell Jones, the legendary championship quarterback here from Ohio State.